Hello everyone, my name is Maria Harim and welcome to another exciting session on Mindful Pakistan. When we talk about mindfulness, uh, previously we discussed about action, meditation, but now it's more about art. So um, something that really struck me about this speaker is that she's an art therapist and a licensed one because in my uh, limited knowledge, you can say, that I have seen very limited uh, art therapists in Pakistan who are licensed and who, you know, have the proper degree to go for the art therapy. So I have attended a number of art therapy sessions, but I always thought what would it be like to have a licensed art therapist and, you know, have an art therapy experience. So um, for this reason, we have a very uh, you can say acute art therapist who has a very uh, graceful aura and she is based in Ontario, Canada. And she's working with my favorite organization, Art Ed Therapy. And she teaches art therapy too at Toronto Art, Insti art Therapy Institute. And she is into comic therapeutic modality, digital and online art uh, therapy. So let's not waste time any further and let's Keeps our uh, keep our fingers crossed and welcome Rakshanda Khan. <laughs> Hello, Maria. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's such a pleasure to be here, especially on such a special occasion, 14th August. I tried to wear something green, but I think on screen it's coming out a little bit blue. But you know, yeah. I'm trying. This is my effort to be, um, yeah, for a mindful Pakistan. Yeah, and what really matters is wearing green is not, you can say, an obligation. It's the spirit that we carry that matters. Mm -hmm. And you are from um, Pakistan and you went to Canada. And as you told me before that you uh, were in, in this valley valley, mm -hmm. and you went uh, to the art, you in, were introduced to the art therapy because of something in Pakistan. So tell us more about it. Yes, so I did not know about art therapy at all. But ever since mm -hmm. I was little, for me, art was very much about expressing myself and about, you know, um, trying different things out. And it was always a very relax, uh, relaxing experience, <clears throat> excuse me, that allowed me to de-stress. And then um, I was attending a workshop at T2F, the second floor, and I came across an art therapist and she was talking about art therapy and she was, you know, explaining what art therapy is. And that was my first introduction actually in Pakistan to art therapy. And I was just blown away because it seemed like such a perfect combination of the things that I love, which are art and psychology and therapy. And uh, so when we moved to Canada, which was a few years ago, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I decided to start my training and uh, finally graduated. And, and I'm now I'm working as an art therapist and I love it. I love every minute of it. Wow, that's awesome. So can you tell us the definition of art therapy in your opinion and its types? Sure. So art therapy is a form of psychotherapy which uses the creative process of making, think, uh, making something to help individuals express and understand how they think, feel, and act. So the focus in art therapy is self-expression, uh, reflection and exploration of any specific themes or topics that the client uh, wishes to address. So um, it's very important to understand that art therapy is not like an art class. So we're not trying to make a beautiful piece of art and it's not about your skills and you know technique or anything like that. It's very much a form of communication and a way to express yourself. So you're using the art to just um, communicate and to express what is going on with you or trying out different things. Um, so art therapy always, um, you know, it's important for it to be in a confidential space. It involves a therapeutic relationship between the client and the therapist. And it really allows the client to express um, difficult thoughts and feelings without depending on just words. Okay, that's awesome. And is it possible for us to, you know, do art as a therapy on our own? Of course, art in itself okay. is a very healing process. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, neuroscience um, studies and uh, a lot of research that's being done to look at how um, art can uh, impact us or the impact that art has on, art, on us. So there are neural pathways in the brain which kind of uh, connect movement um, with, um, you know, uh, movement and um, using your hands 
with relieving anxiety and relieving stress. So for example, you know, when people are knitting or they're sewing or you're doing something that's, um, I guess, mindful, it, uh, there is science that backs up how that can de-stress you and can relax you. Um, and also, you know, I find that um, art therapy or using art in a mindful and healing way, it, um, it basically allows you to connect your imagination with your body. You know, and that in itself is a very pleasurable experience. It's a very relaxing experience. It highlights the the reward centers in your brain, and it makes the whole experience very um, relaxing for you. So, art in itself, you know, doing anything artistic, doing anything creative, is very relaxing and very healing. And we call that art as therapy. But art therapy always involves a relationship with an art therapist. So there has to be an art therapist present who's trained in helping uh, individuals process their feelings or their emotions in the moment. Okay, that's good. And uh, when we talk about art as therapy, mm -hmm. um, what, are, what are the minimal tools required to perform an enriching experience? Like oh. we can do it just by uh, pencil only? Of course. Yeah, okay. you can use any materials, whatever works for you. You know, it doesn't have to involve uh, a, even a pe pencil and a paper. You know, you can go and draw something out in, in the sand with your finger. <laughs> you can make marks with, uh, with just that. Um, so it's okay. really using different materials, different tools, found objects, pretty much anything to um, in a creative manner to express yourself mm -hmm. or to explore things or to play or to experiment. Okay, uh, if I talk about my own experience, art has been, uh, you can say it has been traumatizing for me because in a school, mm -hmm. my teachers used to, you know, uh, ask us to make a perfect drawing. And my friend had a, an older sister in home economics, I guess. And she yeah. used to draw very beautifully while I, was, I used to work really hard and my art pieces were not up to the mark. Mm -hmm. So do you think that the clients that you, you know, you have experience with, do they have, the, do they feel that art is not that healing that many people claim to be? Yeah, so I think that is a big barrier, actually, when it comes to connecting mm -hmm. with art. So, uh, you know, as art therapists, we believe everybody is creative, everybody can use art, everybody can uh, find joy and healing in art. But, you know, we're kind of trained to say that this is good art and this is bad art and you are an artist and you are not an artist and you have talent or skill and you don't, you know? So there's a lot of judgment that we impose on that creative process. Instead of just going with whatever comes up and appreciating whatever, you know, that art has to tell us about ourselves or even just, you know, tell us about what we enjoy about the process. So really one of the things that we encourage people to do is to not focus on the product at all. It's really about the process and just connecting with the art materials, exploring the different art materials and allowing different things to emerge, which again, I think is a very mindful uh, way of connecting with our environment or connecting with anything, being with it, sitting with it, connecting with it and allowing things to emerge. Okay, considering that, you know, pandemic has made us all online. Mm -hmm. So do you think digital art uh, making has the same impact as the art that, you know, have a proper setup and they do it there? Yes, so, um, you know, this has been quite an experience for art therapists because we are generally used to working um, with traditional art making materials in a, in a, you know, in a space one-on-one -on -one with clients or in groups in person. Um, so online, it's a different experience, but what, what more and more studies and research have shown, especially during COVID, is that there are ways to work with digital technologies that allow for meaningful engagement with art making and even in therapy. So for example, you know, um, the internet offers many tools um, that you can use to make okay. art. You know, okay. for example, if you're doing a collage, you might be pulling out things from different magazines and pasting them together. Um, and when you're working digitally and you want to make a collage, you have the whole internet at your disposal. You can pick any image from pretty much anywhere and work with it, you know? Um, there are lots of uh, art making apps that we have available as well and many different ways to sort of use digital technologies and this, you know, interface that we have between us um, that can be helpful and that can be healing. So, um, you know, it's just that we believe that different materials bring out a different response. 
So it's really about understanding how to work with different materials or different mediums uh, in a way uh, that is centered around our goals. So for example, if we're focused on anxiety, so how can we use these different materials to understand how, why we get anxious, what makes us anxious, and what we can do to relieve uh, anxiety and cope with it. Okay, that's awesome. Can you tell me uh, three top of the mind tools that are very helpful in your opinion? That you know, digital tools that uh, a person who is into self art therapy or art as therapy can use. Digital tools for art as therapy. Um, okay, well, I would recommend you know just trying out different apps. There are a lot of apps right now which give you uh, many different ways of making art. You know, there are even apps where you can do sort of, you know, with your finger, you can make all these different um, uh, mandalas or relaxing shapes. Um, there are apps where you can animate things very easily. They have all these different characters that you can just pick up and kind of put into uh, a scenario or a setup, which can be really um, entertaining, but also a way to sort of communicate something maybe that's on your mind. Um, I really like working uh, with the uh, stop motion studio. I just enjoy you know, creating little animations with that. Um, and that can be fun for me. But really, I feel it's um, it's it's what it, it depends on digital literacy. What is your literacy level, your comfort with digital technologies, how you like to work with it. Um, so, yeah, there's there's so many options. I would say just dive in and explore and find something that works for you. OK, thank you. Um, the digital art uh, medium that I like most is uh, Pedalit. Mm -hmm. And I hope you're a, a, a familiar with Pedalit. Are you? Uh, with which one? Sorry. Pedalit, Pedalit. I'm not familiar with it, actually. Please share okay. more. OK, I'll, I'll let you know about it in our uh, DMs, you can say. For now, um, because you are the star of the show, but, uh, so you should be answering the questions. <laughs> so, uh, OK, if I feel anxious, for example, and you know I feel uh, screen anxiety, for example, so do you think that I should go for online art therapy or it should be a physical one that I should go for? I think for now, I mean, I know here in Canada, we still have so many restrictions and, you know, um, it's safer for people to meet online. So mm -hmm. we found, you know, uh, a lot of clients have chosen or have prefer, they prefer to meet online. Um, but really, again, it's, it's, it's a matter of convenience. I don't think that it's something that, you know, in person is better than online or online is better than in person. It really depends on what works for you and your unique situation. So for some people, you know, they just don't feel safe meeting in person. They'd rather meet online. So then we'd work with them online. So it's not a matter of um, uh, what, which is better for anxiety. Mm -hmm. It is mm -hmm. a matter of what is better in terms of processing this for you and your unique situation. OK. Uh, in your bio, it's written that you are a psychotherapist and an art therapist too. So how do you connect the two? So I work under, I'm registered with the College of uh, Registered Psychotherapists of Ontario, uh, which means that I am a psychotherapist. Uh, okay. So I am, um, the work that I do really is art therapy is a form of psychotherapy. And so okay. as a registered psychotherapist, I um, use art as a tool in my work with clients, mm -hmm. in my therapy work with clients. OK. So a psychologist or psychiatrist re recommend you, basically, right? And then you perform the, uh, you know, you work with the client. Or how, what's the process? What's the referral process? Yeah. So clients can self-refer. We do okay. get referrals from other agencies, um, social service agencies. We get referrals from doctors, from psychiatrists, from psychologists. Um, so. It's a, it's, it really, yes, from healthcare professionals, but as well as uh, people who are interested in art therapy and they want to self-refer for services. Okay. Uh, when we talk about art therapy, you know, um, it's said that it's introverts heaven. To us, you know, art therapy, art is something that, you know, uh, people who are not very good with communication, they, mm -hmm. they're mostly good at art. So what's your uh -huh. take on that? 
Yes, I know. Well, um, I think that, you know, art is for everybody. I wouldn't say that it's yeah. just for introverts or for people who prefer not to speak. I mean, sure, it's a great tool of communication for folks who'd rather not talk. It isn't just for them either. You know, we have clients who have so many different personality types and so many different backgrounds. And, you know, they all engage with art in their own way. Um, and they all find some meaning in it. So, yeah, and, um, you know, it's really just another way for us to communicate, to connect with each other. And art is something that as human beings, we've been doing since the beginning of time, you know? So it's only now perhaps that, you know, we say, well, this art belongs in an art gallery and this art belongs in a museum and this is good art and this is bad art. Well, you know, I think all art is good art and all art is, uh, you know, we're all artists. We can all uh, create, a, we can all express ourselves creatively. And this is just another way for us to communicate. Okay. And you said that, you know, art vary according to individuals. So, for example, if I'm an introvert, what type of art do, uh, do you think is best for me? In the sense that, you know, it's, I can understand that it depends on individual preference, but, mm -hmm. you know, uh, being in art field for so long, you might be able to, you know, pin, pinpoint that extroverts are good at that type of art, or is there a research or something related to that? Um, I am not familiar. Maybe there is some research around introverts or extroverts when it comes to art in different mediums. But okay. uh, generally, we find that different materials or different mediums, there is an understanding that they activate different parts of the brain. So, for example, working with pencils or markers mm -hmm. or, you know, um, those sort of materials are very controlled. You have a lot of control. If you're working with watercolor, for example, um, there's a lot less control. You know, the water is going to do what it's going to do and you have to kind of uh, use it, uh, try and contain it. It's less easy to control than, say, working mm -hmm. with a drawing pencil. Um, and then clay is a very tactile, very sensory experience. And when you're working with clay, you know, it can get really messy. And some people like that. Some people don't like that. But then, you know, put some Play-Doh in front of someone and you'll find that, they, you know, they'll get very playful with it. And there's something about working with that material which can, you know, bring out the child in, in folks. So, yeah, it's just different materials can bring out different responses in us and some uh, some of us might prefer some responses, other might prefer, you know, um, others. But I guess perhaps for someone who's a little hesitant to work with art, I would go with something that's more easily controlled as opposed to something that, you know, you have less control over, just for that sense of safety. But again, it's mm -hmm. it's relative to each individual. Okay. You did a research well when you were uh, given a grant by Canadian government. Tell us about that. I was not given a grant by the Canadian government. So I'm a member okay. of the Canadian Art Therapy Association. And okay. this was actually my thesis. So I did this okay. research for my thesis. And then mm -hmm. I applied for um, the grant. It's an award that the Canadian Art Therapy Association uh, gives to students. And I, I won. Um, okay. So this was basically research on using comics in online art therapy with Pakistani teenagers. So. I was a Pakistani teenager. <laughs> I used to love comics. You know, I love working with comics. And I found that, you know, there was so much that I could do with comics because it's such a versatile medium. And I know that, you know, art therapy is still something that uh, we don't really have uh, many options uh, available to us in Pakistan, you know, to folks in Pakistan to access it. And yet I feel that especially for teenagers, it's so wonderful, it's so great. Um, so I wanted to try and find a way to see if that's something that could be helpful. So I worked with three Pakistani teens, all three of them from Karachi. And uh, for eight weeks, we'd meet online. And it was a, a fun process because it was five o'clock in the morning for me. <laughs> and it was much later okay. in the day for them. Um, so we'd meet once a week and we do a different okay. comic exercise. And uh, okay. what I found is that, you know, as they got more comfortable with the comics medium, they and they got more comfortable with the idea of art therapy, that the whole process was, um, you know, beneficial for them. And I, I, I would love to do more of this in Pakistan, you know, uh, maybe um, on a wider scale, um, because, yeah, I really believe in comics. I really believe in art therapy. And I think that teenagers especially can really benefit from it. 
Okay. So, do you, uh, in your experience with Pakistani teenagers, uh, do you think they were very much informed about art, or you know they had moderate knowledge and you had to you know upgrade them? What was your experience related to that? So very similar to what you said about how you know our first experience with art tends to be in art class, where you know we have certain things that we have to uh, draw, or you know we have a certain skills or techniques that we have to learn, and it can be a little bit stressful, or it can be something that's fun depending on you know how your art class was. Um, and, but I found that there wasn't that much of uh, knowledge around comics. You know, some um, understanding based on the young world, Dawn Young World, and you know, comics through that. Even though there are some amazing Pakistani comics that you know I love, um, which are talking about so many different things and social issues and, and stuff like that, which is which is great uh, to see. Um, so it was really about um, creating that understanding that oh, you know, art can be anything. I can create anything. I don't have to make something that's perfect. I can express myself through this in many different ways. And oh, okay, so this is what comics are. And you know, I like I look at a Batman comic or I look like at a Superman comic, and they're just so you know, the drawings are so um, difficult, and I could never do that. But hey, a comic doesn't have to be like that. I, it, you know, it can just be something very simple. And yet at the same time, I can share my story. Through this medium, so it was a it was a wonderful experience to see um, the teens get more comfortable with the whole process and learning to express themselves through it. Okay, uh, uh, we are running short of time, and it's a very interesting mm -hmm. conversation, though. But what are the top three techniques that you can share that you know uh, if we are feeling not that uh, best, we are feeling low. So what are the three, you can say, um, art as a therapy techniques that we can do at home without, you know, having an art therapist around? Sure. So I guess one of the simplest, most mindful ways to connect with art is mm -hmm. to just have, say, for example, you know, you have some drawing materials and then you have some paint materials and maybe some clay. So have like a variety of different art materials in front of you. Do some mm -hmm. breathing exercises, maybe connect with your body and then just spend some time with each different medium and just ignore it. So look at the shape, look at the texture, look at the color, you know, really try and connect with that whole process of using your hands and using that material and spend some time just relaxing and exploring without any judgment. You don't have to draw anything. You can just look like a bunch of scribbles and that's okay, you know? So, and then maybe um, do some deep breathing again and move on to a different art material. Try working with paint and see what that process is like, you know, and how you feel after you work with paint. What are the different feelings that uh, are, are occurring inside of you and how is your body responding to you working with these different materials? So this is one of the most easy, basic, simple ways of mindfully mm -hmm. connecting with art materials. And then there are things you can do with your breath as well. So, for example, this is something I do myself is, you know, I'll just take a moment to connect with my breath and I'll draw my breath. Um, and I usually try for something like this. I'd like to work with a uh, drawing material, which is very smooth, you know, so like a crayon or, or a pastel, oil pastel or a chalk pastel. And I will just uh, take a deep breath in, you know, and then just make a mark when I breathe out. So only as long as my breath. And I'll find that, you know, as I'm making that mark, shapes are gonna come up. And then also, as I'm deepening my connection with my breath, the marks that I'm making are changing. So it's a really way, a really great way of um, creating a visual representation of your breath in the moment. You know, So maybe your breath looked like that, uh, looked a certain way in the morning, it looked a certain way in the afternoon, it looked a certain way at night, but at least you're getting that uh, sense of, okay, this is where I'm at. And you're, and you're using the art to mindfully um, engage with yourself and just slow down, you know? So that's another way. Um, and um, I guess there's just, um, what else? There's this other exercise you can do uh, if you want to create like a positive moment, for example. Um, one thing you can do is you can um, visualize your favorite place in nature. And just imagine, you know, if you're thinking about your favorite place in nature, what does it look like? What, what do you see? What do you hear in that beautiful place in nature? 
you know what do you what do you touch you know do you feel the grass do you feel do you feel water um is there something that you're eating while you're there is there something that you taste what do you smell so you're just using your five senses to connect with that memory of that beautiful place in nature which was a very um rejuvenating and positive experience for you and then once you've sort of captured that memory you can sort of you can draw representations of that um and um the representations could be a symbol it could be a word it doesn't have to be a really fancy drawing that you, know, you have to capture that moment you know beautifully and it looks like an amazing piece of art it doesn't have to be like that it could just be um a word or a symbol that represents that and so this is an exercise you know uh, that we sometimes do at artist therapy is that then you can uh turn that drawing or you can paste it into like a, a little book so say for example you have a piece of paper you can fold it up and you can kind of staple it in the middle and you have a little book so you've got a little book which is a memory of a beautiful moment that you experienced and you can pull that out at any time you know and go through it and try try and connect with that again because we have everything that we need right inside of us and it's really a matter of just being able to connect with that um to find peace and healing so yeah perhaps you could build a whole library <laughs> of beautiful uh moments and time that uh, you experience that when you are feeling low or um not as positive you can connect with okay your parting note on mindful pakistan and you know art in the process mindful pakistan and oh my gosh i i miss pakistan i haven't been to pakistan in a while um i'm so grateful to be here to be able to participate in 14th august this way um i do really believe that mindfulness is so important for all of us it can be very healing it can be very um helpful for us uh, especially when we're so we're so caught up in so many different things we have so many stressors we have so many anxieties and i believe that when we combine art with mindfulness we are then connecting our body with our imagination and we are using our imagination this internal resource that we have to find solutions to our problems so um within trauma for example or when we have bad experiences then that ability to find solutions or to think creatively uh, shuts down so the more we sort of connect with that sense of our part of ourselves which is playful which is resourceful which is imaginative that can find creative solutions in stressful situations um the better it is for us so i guess that's that's all i have to say yeah and we should not be very critical of on our own self when we are making mistakes yes artists. yes the judgment you know i mean who needs that honestly we're just denying ourselves a beautiful experience when we judge ourselves and we judge the art that we make really we don't need to do that at all just enjoy it explore working with different materials it doesn't have to look like anything it could just look like a bunch of colors um on the page but you know that bunch of colors um is allowing you to express something that you're feeling in the moment or maybe is just allowing you to relax so just enjoy <laughs> go for the go for the process of creativity and uh, connection with yourself yeah that's very inspiring and for uh, i got an inspiration and i have a word for it that your art worth is known best to you not to the world right yes i love that that's beautiful for sure i 100% thank you very much thank you very much it was nice talking to you and people who are seeing it on our page uh mm -hmm. the recording will be available you can see it later too okay, okay. and thank you, so you rakshanda for coming yeah thank you so much thank yeah. you thank you very much